Hi. If you're watching this, you'll probably want to learn about mathematical modeling. So maybe you've heard that it makes it easier to get your papers published, or maybe it will help you in a grant proposal or something. So let's talk about this. How do we actually model? Well, first we want to learn as much about our system as possible, right? Because the more we know, the more realistic we can make our model. Once we have learned a lot, we can then try to describe what we know with mathematical equations, which probably depend on a bunch of unknown parameters. We then have to do a lot of research to fix the values of these parameters as good as we possibly can. And that then gives us a system that we can simulate on a computer which will result in some time series. And those time series, we can plot in nice diagrams. And then what? How, how will this actually advance our understanding of the system? The problem with what I just said is that most of this is actually wrong. And if you believe these things, it lands you in a place where your model produces pretty pictures, but not much else. So here's my list of six modeling misconceptions that you can avoid to make your models more effective. So, misconception one is that we actually model systems. Right, we talk like this all the time. If you ask me what I did today, I might say, oh, I modeled a marine ecosystem. And partly this is true, but partly this is also wrong. And the reason is that saying it this way gives you the idea that I created a little mirror image of the actual system. Sometimes this is indeed what we want. Sometimes you want to make a little model reality. This is the case, for example, if you are developing a computer game, or if you're modeling a system that you know really, really well, and you want to forecast precisely, like we do in the weather system. But the fact is, if you're a game developer, or you make the weather forecast, then you hardly need this video. So, what is the misconception here? The misconception is that modeling systems is the only use of modeling. Most of the time, people like me spend their time not modeling systems, but modeling phenomena. So, let's think about this. I would argue nobody ever modeled a bird. Why? There's no model that captures everything that there's to know about the bird. No, typically you model phenomena. So, you model bird flight, or bird reproduction, or bird behavior or something else about the bird, but you narrow it down to this particular aspect. If we try to capture all aspects of a system at the same time, then we are making models that are often much too complicated to make sense of. Consider the weather system. That is a system that has been studied for hundreds of years. Only in the late 1990s we have reached a state that we understood the system so well that models actually became a competitive way of making weather forecasts. So, as a normal researcher working on a normal question, you are typically much better served focusing in, zooming on a particular aspect of the system that you can actually understand. The second misconception is believing in miracles. See, it's easy to believe that we just need to write a bunch of equations and then magically this really great deep insight will appear. And Sometimes, these miracles even happen. However, this cannot be our first plan when we embark on a modeling project. When we start a modeling project, we want to have a good idea how this will result in actual insights into the system. The main reason for mathematical modeling is that some very nice things can be done with equations. And these techniques that can be applied, they form a sort of toolkit. Being a mathematical modeler means that you know which tool will give you which insights. And being a good mathematical modeler means that you are able to design your models already with this tool in mind, so that there's a perfect fit between the model and the method of analysis you are planning to use. So, don't believe in miracles. Plan ahead. Have a plan that does not require something magically happening. Misconception 3 is a big one. Models need to be realistic. Almost the opposite is true. See, the real world is a mess. It's horribly complicated. It's so complicated that we actually need to make models to make sense of it. If we make our models 
as complicated as the real world, well, we will learn nothing from them. So, what can we do instead? Well, we need to simplify, right? That's the purpose of the model, to be unrealistic, to be simpler than the real world. How do we do this? Well, a good way is to start with a model that is as simple as you can possibly make it. Because the model is so simple, the analysis will be really quick. And what will this analysis show? Well, it will show that the model fails to describe reality. That is not a problem. In fact, this is actually great. Because by analyzing the failure, we can then understand how to improve the model. This leads us to a slightly better model. And the slightly better model, well, is still easy to analyze. First, because it's still a very simple model, but second, we already have experience from our first analysis. So we can make the model fail again and improve it even further until we arrive at a model that includes just the aspects of the real world that we need to include to understand the phenomenon we are interested in and nothing more. We are not going to make a model that is true. No, we are going to make a model that is wrong, but a model that is wrong in exactly the right way. Misconception 4 is a quick one. It's a misconception that modeling requires computers. See, the point of building simple models is that you can actually solve these models mathematically. And this mathematical analysis will give you much deeper insights than a simulation. Computers can still sometimes be useful when you get stuck with a math. But like believing in miracles, this shouldn't be our first option. This brings us straight to misconception number five. And that is the misconception that we need to specify everything in our models. See, if we do math, we can deal with unknowns. This is basically the main point of mathematics, that it can manipulate unknown objects. Everything we can do to an equation, we can also do to an equation that has unknown variables in it, and even unknown functions. We can take unknown objects and carry them with us through our whole calculation until we get the result. And then once we have the result, well, if we wanted, we could still plug specific values in or something. However, we don't have to do the calculation again because we already have the result. This is almost like we did it in infinite times in parallel with all possible values of our unknown quantities. This is really the true power of mathematics, that it's infinitely parallel. So don't waste too much time searching for values in the literature. Rather, start your modeling quickly. And once you have the result, then is the time to compare to the literature. We have arrived at our destination, the final and most important misconception number six. And this misconception is that your models are somehow bad or wrong or unrealistic. The reason why people find mathematical modeling difficult is that it requires a somewhat different skill set than other branches of mathematics or science. The most important skills for modeling are confidence and courage. Because if you make a model, it will invariably seem a very simple effort to you. It might be hard while you do it, but once you have the result, you would think, hey, why was it so difficult? How was I struggling with this? This seems so easy now. But still, you have to trust in what you do. You have to have confidence. And if your model gives you trouble, you have to stick with it. And in the end, when you reach a conclusion, you have to really trust these conclusions. If you have made a model and analyzed it to its end, you have created something beautiful and it has value. So trust it, believe it, fight for it. Wow, it's really cold today here, so I am heading home. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave it a like. And actually, if I piqued your interest, and you want to see how these things actually work in practice, how these thoughts and ideas can be applied, well, why not subscribe? I'm going to put out some more videos over the next couple of weeks to illustrate how these ideas are actually put into practice in real projects.